This video focuses on the mechanism for alkene metathesis. This will depict the Chauvin mechanism with a little bit more detail based on discoveries in the intervening 50 years. I'll describe the source of the active catalyst after we have worked through the full catalytic cycle. X-ray crystal structures of the active catalyst reveal that not only are the bulky phosphenes trans to each other, but both chloride ligands are also trans to each other. Which is a little surprising and not quite the same as how the chlorides are depicted in the textbook. Therefore, the active catalyst has a square pyramidal geometry, which leaves an open site, an empty orbital, trans to the carbene ligand. The probability of alkene collision with ruthenium is much higher on the open site trans to the carbene ligand. The lower probability pathway involves an alkene colliding with ruthenium so that a ruthenium chloride bond occupies the open site. The ligand association and ligand dissociation steps are all in equilibrium with relatively low energy barriers so that the equilibria reactions proceed with rapid rates. Turning to page three of the worksheet, this is the detailed catalytic cycle for alkene metathesis. I'll begin with the minor diastereomer with the chlorides cis to each other and with the alkene and carbene ligands cis to each other. Chauvin's mechanism introduced a new organometallic mechanism of cycloaddition of the two carbons of the alkene with the carbon and ruthenium of the carbene to give a metallocyclobutane intermediate. In Chauvin's mechanism, the strained metallocyclobutane undergoes retrocycloaddition either to return the original ruthenium carbene plus alkene or a new ruthenium carbene and a new alkene, in this case, ethylene. With ligand dissociation of ethylene, a site reopens for another molecule of alkene to collide with ruthenium, forming a new metallocyclobutane intermediate. Once again, this is reversible, either going backwards or going forwards. But by going forward, this generates a new alkene and regenerates the ruthenium carbene active catalyst. Let's now consider the source of the active catalyst. The Grubbs-1 precatalyst actually has a phenyl substituent. The steric hindrance from the phenyl substituent diminishes the reactivity enough so that the precatalyst can be stored. It's even commercially available. At the beginning of the reaction, the first cycle will involve alkene coordination with the phenyl substituted carbene, which undergoes cycloaddition to give metallocyclobutane and retrocycloaddition, followed by ligand dissociation 
which generates styrene, which is the alkene with the phenyl substituent. And with dissociation of styrene, the catalytic cycle now proceeds as previously described. The new alkene ligand, if it is a monosubstituted alkene, has CH2 on the end, which is transformed through a metallocyclobutane into a new CH2 ruthenium carbene. So that ligand dissociation of the first alkene product regenerates the ruthenium methylene active catalyst. Moving to the lower part of page three, As described earlier, I made a claim that the reactive diastereomer has the cis chloride ligands. In class, we'll discuss the reasoning supporting that claim. Turning to page four of the worksheet, You may have noticed that I've shown the alkene ligand coordinated in a conformation where the alkyl group is closer to the chloride ligand and further from the carbene ligand. The alkyl is syn to chloride, anti to carbene. But it's reasonable to expect that the alkene collision with ruthenium might occur on the opposite face of the alkene, so that the alkyl group is anti to the chloride and syn to the carbene. I'll work through the implications of that here for this second conformer. Consider the cycloaddition mechanism, which gives a metallocyclobutane from the conformer on the right, the metallocyclobutane has the alkyl group at a position most distant from the ruthenium with its bulky ligands. Now let's consider the retrocycloaddition to generate ruthenium carbene and a new alkene. And compare what is different between these two structures. Stop the video for a moment if you need to. The only difference between these two alkene coordinated ruthenium carbene complexes is that they are mirror images. All that has happened is exchanging a methylene from the ruthenium carbene to the terminal methylene of the alkene. For the questions at the bottom of page four, which we will discuss in class, which step is the stereochemistry defining step, the formal oxidation state, and electron count for metallocyclobutanes, and the 18 electron intermediates, it's worth looking back at the catalytic cycle. For part three, think about which step is the stereochemistry defining step in this catalytic cycle. For part four, determine the formal oxidation state and the electron count for one of the metallocyclobutane intermediates. And for part five, mark or check all of the 18 electron intermediates in the catalytic cycle and describe what these intermediates have in common. This concludes the video on the catalytic cycle for alkene metathesis.